it is uh, a celebration or a commemoration or a, a lamentation of Indigenous Peoples Day, nay, Columbus Day today. And so uh, to get started, why don't you tell us like why this became a big deal, why this became, first of all, why it became a holiday and then, you know, what that holiday reflects and why so many people have issues with it, why it's so problematic. <laughs> well, it's, and that, that'll only take an hour or two. So. Yeah, you know, look, C Columbus Day found its origins in the early 20th century amongst Italian Americans who were themselves victims of uh, bigotry and prejudice and discrimination. And what Italian Americans did was essentially claim Columbus as their own, right? That, that, that we're not un American, that we're not enemies of the state. You know, you mentioned Sacco and Vanzetti before we got started, that, that we're loyal citizens and we were there at the very beginning, right? So it was a, it was a, it was a measure to sort of buy into the American dream that we are, we are here, we matter, and, and our history on this continent is deep. Um, it's been celebrated pretty uncritically ever since, right? Christopher Columbus, the discoverer of America. And look, the, the movement towards Indigenous People Day, it seems to me, began around the time of the 500th anniversary of, of Columbus's voyage in the early 90s. And you began to see during that period some, 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 some polemical scholarly works, Kirkpatrick Sales, The Conquest of Paradise, and things like that, that really began sort of lifting the veil from this, the, uh, over this myth of, of Columbus as this great explorer. And, and I think what has emerged over time is this, this notion that Columbus is, is, is a mythical figure. Um, he's, he's a symbol of all sorts of things. He's a symbol for those who, who embrace Columbus Day, and he is a symbol for those who embrace in, in Indigenous Peoples Day, right? If, for, for President Trump, and you can go to, a, go to the White House website and you can read um, President Trump's last uh, couple of uh, proclamations uh, for Columbus Day. Um, hopefully this October, Monday will be his last one, but what the president has done in these proclamations is he celebrates Columbus as a great explorer, as an adventurer, as the guy who discovered America with no mention whatsoever of the consequences of, of the arrival of the Spanish and other Europeans in the Americas. No discussion of it at all. Whereas those who advocate for Indigenous Peoples Day will say, well, look, there were consequences with this. And, and this whole sense that you know, when I went to Syracuse, I was in Syracuse from 1990 to 1994, and I was one of those tunnel vision grad students who didn't really pay attention to much other than what I was doing. I'd never seen snowfall before I moved to New York, so I just hunkered down and stayed in the library. And when I got my first job in, in Montana, I think my, my, one of my first years there, I, got a, I, I was invited to participate in this NEH seminar on the Blackfeet Reservation, way up in the northwestern corner of Montana. And it was, it was one of these gatherings where um, elementary and middle school teachers were coming together on the reservation to talk about um, young adult books and books for kids of that age. And one of these books was a um, book by the late Michael Doris called Morning Girl. It's kind of a cute story of this girl who lived on, on Guanahani in San, San Salvador. And it's sort of her and her brother and their hijinks and they're having fun. And the book ends, the last page of the book is Columbus's letter when he got to, got to North America. And this letter, it, it's the letter where he talks about, I didn't see anyone except for one young girl. And that's, that's the girl we've been reading about. And, and a couple of paragraphs later, Columbus says, well, they'll make good servants. And I was listening to the discussion and the Native American teachers at this gathering all said that they would use this book, but they would cut that last page out of the book. Physically, they would remove that, that Columbus letter from the book. It was too much for their students. And I have to admit, it's caught me a little off guard, but, but their point was, you've got this beautiful story of these two beautiful children. It, it's this, this great depiction of, of life. And at its end, you have Columbus, you know, in 1492, Columbus sails the ocean blue and contemplates out loud how indigenous children will make good slaves. Kids, children. It, it is too much, they felt, for the kids. And, and that's when I, I got started talking about this. I've never really, have, have, you know, I, Columbus wasn't my, my, my topic of research, but it's something I've been following very closely. And I think it's become more of an issue as we've gotten into the dispute over um, monuments and things like that, the removal of Confederate monuments. And as this healthy movement has, has got underway, 
Columbus has, has re-entered the discussion and Columbus statues have been defaced. Just today, this is a Friday before Columbus Day, the mayor of Syracuse has announced that it's huge. Um, Christopher Columbus statue in the city's Columbus Square will be removed and taken down in response to sort of a community-wide coalition, including the neighboring Onondaga nation to, to, to bring this down. But, but the, the reaction to this kind of stuff, and you see this in, in, in the president and in right-wing radio and, 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 and all sorts of people is that um, this is somehow an attack. It's, it's unfamiliar, it's, it's, it's revisionist history, right? And what I think people outside of, of my line of work and your line of work, Bob and Scott, what they don't realize, right, is that history is being revised all the time. It's, it's being revised in, in the scholarship, it's being revised in, in seminar rooms and, and now, and I think this is, is the exciting part about it, it's being, being revised in the streets. Um, that's one of the things that's really kind of, I think, been really compelling in the past six months, especially like, you know, all of a sudden Americans are like captivated with all kinds of histories. Um, I'm going to talk about the statues a little more, but, you know, uh, I, obviously everybody who listens to this knows I, I grew up in a, in a very Italian community, uh, Sicilian actually, but um, Columbus for us actually wasn't that big a deal. And uh, we opened this with a clip from uh, the famous show, The Sopranos, where they're, they're very upset because Native Americans are protesting Columbus. And, um, you know, growing up, we were actually more kind of familiar with cultural figures, you know, like Joe DiMaggio and Frank Sinatra. But recently, the, the governor of your state, uh, who's a paisan, Andre Cuomo, when they were talking about Columbus, essentially, I forget what he said, you know, this is a symbol to the Italian, but what he meant was it's, you know, he didn't use the words, but what he was saying was the same thing Southerners were saying about Confederate monuments. It's heritage, not hate, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know, not all Italians feel that way. I mean, there are many of us who... Uh, understand that, that this is really, you know, kind of a very painful uh, uh, reckoning for a lot of people. And it doesn't really, uh, you know, make Italians look better or proud. But yeah, it does come within a context of, you know, some really serious anti-Italian problem, like in, you know, uh, New Orleans in 1891, the lynching of Sicilians and the kind of equation with the mob and all that. So, um, you know, it's important to bring that out. And there is this reckoning with history. But